Hi. Uh, good morning. Uh, this morning we will introduce um, what was zero architecture. Zero architecture is what was next generation virtualization, virtualization platform. Um, uh, first, uh, let me introduce my, me and my colleague to speak at, the, at this topic. Uh, I'm the uh, chief architecture of Huawei Virtualization and the, the uh, general manager of virtualization service domain of Huawei Cloud. My colleague, uh, Huang Zicao, is a very senior architecture in virtualization of Huawei. Um, we will co-speak about this topic. Um, uh, you know that uh, virtualization is the basic fundamental of cloud computing. Um, for example, um, many cloud providers, for example, Amazon, uh, Huawei, Alibaba, and, and many uh, cloud providers use virtualization, for example, Zen and KVM, for many years. Um, basically, the virtualization is, good, uh, is very good, is good for cloud computing, but as the cloud computer requirement uh, more and more, the gaps between the current virtualization, for example, the Zen and KVM, between the cloud service requirement is become bigger and bigger. For example, the cloud server, cloud service lead considering performance, cost, security, and the stability. In both these four fields, we see from practical experience that the KVM and the Zen have some gaps. For example, the performance usually both the Zen and the KVM have some gaps depend on um, workload type. Usually, uh, the gap is three percent to fifty percent or more. Uh, another problem is that on the current architecture, the cost for the cloud provider is becoming higher and higher. Usually, we spend um, ten or twenty percent of our cost to serve for cloud provider itself, for example, for Huawei. The Huawei business, for example, the backend, backend workload and uh, some agent in the server will consume 10% or 20% of the CPUs and the memories. That means a lot of time, a lot of money, for example, dozens of millions of dollars. This resource cannot be sold out to the customer. So, uh, the, th the third problem is that security. Um, you know that QEMU is a very big system and uh, um, Linux is also a very big, big system. So there's a lot of uh, security holes at the QEMU and the Linux. So we have to repel again and again for these uh, security holes. And the, the last is the st stability. Uh, usually, we will uh, reuse the, the physical CPUs by different vCPUs. So there is a lot of labor noise and the performance is unstable. Uh, that's our experience by using Zen and KVM in cloud practical. Uh, let's see the history of uh, virtualization technology. We, we said that in the very early stage, for example, before uh, 2000, 2003, um, the virtualization uh, is a pure software virtualization. For example, the um, VMware used the binary translation and uh, Zen used PV. Uh, both the te technology are very complicated and uh, uh, has a lot of uh, security issues. So, uh, during the uh, start from 2004 until 2017, Intel and AMD, such kind of a CPU, pro C CPU provider, um, provide some hardware assisted, assisted technology. For example, the VDX for CPU virtualization, uh, VTD for IO virtualization, and the EPT for memory virtualization. Um, this technology, some of these technology are very good. For example, the EPT technology is very uh, lightweight and good enough the, for the performance. But some technology has some issues. For example, uh, the VTD has some um, ecosystem issues and the, you know that if we pass through the, 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 the device to the guest, 
uh, we cannot easily uh, migrate from one server to another. That's, that, would, that would be a really, really good, a big problem for cloud provider because the cloud provider need to update their infrastructure year by year. So um, considering these issues, um, start, from the, uh, start from 2018, um, some cloud provider, for example, Amazon, um, uh, including uh, Amazon, uh, Alibaba, Huawei, and uh, many cloud providers um, start to develop their new virtualization. We call it the virtualization 3.0. Um, the new virtualization is uh, usually uh, they consist of a customized hypervisor and uh, customi customized chips to, um, to satisfy their requirements. For example, uh, for CPUs, they can design a new hypervisor, a very simple and customized hypervisor with almost low virtualization overhead. For memory, we still use, reuse the EPT technology because uh, I just said that, that the EPT is good enough. And for I.O., um, many of the, vendor, the cloud vendors offload the I.O. Uh, overhead to the backend card. We have a we have PC card. They offload the I.O. overhead and the, the resources, for example, the CPUs and the memories that the backend part of the virtualization should use the two card. Um, Okay, so um, for Huawei, we designed uh, a new architecture, architecture Lambda Zero. Uh, this, is, this figure uh, is the architecture of Huawei Zero system. Um, in the front end, we support both Intel's x86 and Huawei's ARM server. At the, end, the, at the back end, uh, it consists of several cards. We can use one card or two cards or three cards at the backend, depending on your requirement. For example, if, you, if we use this system at the private, while it's private cloud, we can, we can use one card. One, only one card is, 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 is enough. But in while it's public cloud, we can use two or three cards. Um, the interface between these two car these cars and the server is the PCIe device. For example, we can use VertIO, LAT, VertIO SCSI, VertIO Block, and NVMEs. All these are hardwired by uh, Huawei's chip. Um, we have a central control card uh, named virtualization controller. This is the control of the whole system. And we also have some IO accelerator card, for example, the network accelerator card and storage accelerator card. As for the hypervisor, we split the hypervisor as the front, front end hypervisor and the back end hypervisor. Oh, this is the zero components. Zero consists of a zero hypervisor, um, zero virtualization controller, uh, or you can call zero control panel, and zero IOs. For zero hypervisors, uh, we have the target of four zero. So that's the, that's the reason why we call this project a zero. Um, currently, we have uh, realized one or two zeros in Huawei's zero, the first generation of zero online. But in the uh, in next year or and the, the year after next year, we we'll still continue to do the hypervisor work. The first zero is that the first is uh, zero resource reserved. That means uh, we reserved zero CPU and the zero memory on the front side server. The second is the performance jitter is zero. The third is virtualization overhead is zero. Uh, you know that in cloud, 
there's a lot of enterprise customers very sensitive about the performance and uh, the stability. So, um, uh, so we 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 set up the the, uh, the target uh, performance zero. Uh, how to say my virtualization overhead is zero. Um, for the uh, zero I/O, we use Huawei's um, chip to accelerate both both network and the storage. Currently, in that work, our performance is uh, 80 million PPS at first stack, and the bandwidth 45 gigabits. Um, for storage, current performance our current performance is one million LPS plus plus one million, uh, 100 uh, microseconds. For the control, for the virtualization control, it was also implemented, uh, implemented by Huawei's chip. We have a SLC chip. This SLC, SLC chip uh, has, two, has, two, uh, has 24 ARM cores and uh, virtualization related silicons to implement virtualization syntax, for example, the VTIO syntax and the NVMe syntax, such kind of things. Um, um, it supports both Intel's x86 and ARM server. It supports both virtualization, VM, and the bare meter. Um, from, from the cloud side, there is no difference between the VMs and the bare meters and the containers. Okay, so um, Zero can support both Huawei's BMS, VMS, and uh, containers. If we support VMs, we lead to ha we we have a zero front and, and a hypervisor at the server side. But if we support parameters and containers, we don't need it. And um, at the end of the, the card, we have three um, interfaces. One interface is to connect to the standard cloud management system. Another interface is storage and endpoint interface. The third interface is network endpoint interfaces. All these interfaces are standard as the normal, I mean, the, for example, uh, as, the, as we support KVM, so the, the VMs, and the support ZEM VMs, uh, there's no difference. So we seamlessly interface with Huawei's public cloud. Okay, um, let me introduce my colleague Huang, Zi, Huang Zicao to introduce some details of their system. Okay, uh, as Paul introduced, uh, Zero System is a whole system, and I will give you a brief introduction about some more details. Uh, as you can see in this figure, uh, the Zero System contains a host, a control car, and uh, IO cars. The control car is necessary for Zero System, and uh, it builds on a virtualization SOC chip, it runs a Linux operating system, and uh, we offload almost all of the management API into these cards, such as creating VM, destroying VM. Uh, currently, we support a native OpenStack framework without almost no change. And uh, this control card also need to coordinates all other cars and host. Mm. When we need to buy a new VM, the operating, the OpenStack central node will and only send requests to this control card, and this control card will prepare all of the resources the VM needs, such as 
uh, how many disk, how many network, and uh, it will create the VM uh, internal channel. Uh, the IO cards are optional. There, there can be one storage card and one network card. Uh, the IO cards are stateless for the original IO system. The storage card supports native EBS interface and so the network card supports native VPC interface. Mm, all of this is configurable Maybe you don't need 18 million PPS network. You can just remove the network car. Maybe you don't, you don't need one million IOPS. You can just remove the storage car. And you can even configure a storage car to be a network car. Yeah, everything is configurable, which make our employee more flexible and uh, config changing very easy and fast. Okay, for the host, uh, it can be a very tiny Linux, uh, maybe with no local disk, with no network interfaces. Uh, the control card can manage the host via PCIe channel, so we can remove the TCP IP protocol, network protocol, and the IO card can expose as many disks to host, so we have no need to use the local disk. And when we use a remote disk, instead of the local disk, we can benefit for config changing uh, such as we can, we can switch this host among ECS mode, bare metal mode, container mode. Uh, all we need to do is prepare three remote disks for these three modes and uh, switch the remote disk to host from one mode to another. Mm, so for the computing system, our key points are one single control card and multi IO cards. Uh, we make almost everything configurable and we make the host tiny. We offload almost all of the management and IO to zero cards. So all the CPU and the memory resources can be sold to guests. Mm, so how we offload the I.O. system, the key point is pass-through. So uh, under traditional virtualization system, we use Qmer to emulate virtual devices to guest. Qmer needs to handle or forward each I.O. packet. Uh, we waste some of the CPU resources for IO system and the IO performance are not very good. Uh, to solve this problem, we introduce a SOC chip, uh, which provides the ability to configure PCI hardware devices. It means that there are many, there are many real PCI devices we can expose to host when we use zero cards and all of these PCI devices can be software defined. We can configure these PCI devices to whatever we want. It can be whatever block, it can be whatever SCSI, it can be NVMe, and we can fast switch among above most. Uh, currently, we use what else SCSI and what else NAT as default because almost all of the guest operating systems support it without any modification. Uh, 
least zero class makes software defined PCI pass through possible. And at the same time, we use, uh, because we use PCI pass through, the IO data pass don't go through host now. Uh, we benefit a lot from We benefit a lot from um, this, and uh, um, and we found that uh, we found that the IO the virtual protocol sometimes becomes the bottleneck. The virtual protocol works well while Kuma emulates virtual devices. But when we use has when we use virtual hardware, uh, there are too many times for DMA read write, and each DMA read write wastes CPU time and may cause cache missing. So, mm, uh, and uh, and as we know, virtual 1.2 protocol may be more friendly to hardware virtual devices. But uh, it can't work for old operating system, so we must keep improving performance uh, for Virtual 1.0 protocol. And yeah, this is some of the key points about our performance optimization. For example, we may uh, prefetch the descriptor, de prefetch the available ring in one DMA opera operation. And we can also batch process requests. Uh, we can even, we can even uh, DMA read date and DMA write used element in one DMA operating, in one DMA operation. So, so our key point is reduce the DMA frequency and to get shorter IO pass and uh, reduce cache missing. So when we benefit from PCI pass through, we have to, and, wide, and when we widely use it, we have to support pass through live migration. So of course, uh, several efforts have been made for pass through live migration, such as VDPA, scalable IO, backend bounding, and yeah, there are many good ideas. But all of these ideas are focused on unmodified hardware. Uh, of course, uh, this consideration makes the framework more general, and ba basically zero system can support all of these framework and mm, but think from another side uh, under zero system all of the hardware is can be software defined so why don't we use the most uh, direct and loot way to get the best performance so I will show you our practice in Huawei cloud we introduced a front-end front-end uh, migration framework. It's based on WFIO and provides all of the migration callbacks such as lock start, lock stop, lock sync, save, restore, and, uh, and at the meantime, we, we introduce a back-end migration framework which also uh, shows the different differences of device. So mm, the key logic run on backend, the backend driver, the backend driver know exactly when the DMA write happened and what the DMA address is. So it's easier, so it's easy for backend driver to lock the dirty page and uh, and uh, to do the dirty page checking. So it just need to return the dirty 
bitmap while front end require it. And in zero system, everything is uh, stored on software. So the device states can also be easy to save and restore. Mm. Currently, the flame, the migration framework supports what I block, what I SCSI, what I net, and with me, and Huawei, Nick, and of course, we works well for a modified GSOS. So, mm, in in Huawei, a question is always in our mind: Can you get better performance? And the answer is always yes. So we there are also some ideas for improve the performance continuously, such as we can uh, we can make the lock sync safe restore concurrently. Uh, you know in Cumul Life Migration Framework, it assumes that every lock sync is, uh, works very soon, smaller than one millisecond. But in this system, uh, with PCI pass-through, the lock sync may cost more than maybe two milliseconds. So when, we, when you have 10 VF, you may cost 20 milliseconds for each lock sync. So, so it becomes necessary to concurrent the lock sync and the same as the safe restore. And uh, it's the pause and the resume are also new process for PCI devices and we also need to uh, make the pause and resume uh, significantly. So um, there are some ideas, and all in all, we achieve 50 milliseconds downtime, and yeah, almost the same as the non PCI pass through performance. Yeah, thank you. So, other questions? Uh, unfortunately, there's no time for questions. So, if maybe there's you, maybe time. you can you can get in like you can get in touch with them like outside. Okay, okay. sorry. There, thank you. There's a lot of we only have five hours, so we can talk offline, right? Okay, thank you. <laughs>